We've been in Vienna for almost 24 hours and I can't believe it. We still haven't figured out how the public transportation system works here. Take for example the tram which we've been on uh, quite a number of times and uh, we couldn't figure out how to pay for the ticket itself. There is a ticketing machine on the tram or rather in the tram but we've tried to effect payment by swiping it and just, well, inserting our card and following the instructions. But we still couldn't pay for our ticket. How could that be? Hey you and welcome back to our YouTube channel and we are doing our summer foodie vlogs in Vienna, the capital city of Austria. All right, just forget about the ticketing conundrum that we've been having so far here on the public transportation system. We'll try to get our head around it later on. We've never really thought about coming to Vienna all these years, but then we decided to go to Slovakia, Slovenia, and uh, it seems to be a very good launching pad for us to commence our travels from. With its metro population of almost 3 million inhabitants, Vienna appears to be a very organized and laid-back capital city. And it's also known as the city of music due to its musical legacy. It's impossible to disregard the fact that world-famous composers like Beethoven and Mozart chose to call Vienna their home. We are not exactly aficionados of classical music, but since we are in Vienna, I guess a classical concert is a must. It's cheeky of me, I know, I apologize, but I've only filmed that very, very short snippet of this classical concert here in St. Anne's Church in Vienna. The most famous place to catch a classical concert in Vienna is at the Musikverhein Concert Hall. And if you think the name sounds a little bit familiar, well, Musik Farhain is the home of the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra and every new year they put up a fabulous performance in the Grand Hall. If you couldn't make it to Musik Farhain, well, fear not. And if your time is limited, you can always watch a classical music performance in one of the many churches here in Vienna. Especially in the summer months, you would have no problem sorting out a ticket to a classical concert in a church. Like this one here, it's called St. Anne's or St. Anna's. 
or you may prefer to watch Vivaldi concert in the famous Saint Stephen's, or maybe even Saint Peter's or Saint Charles. Just take your pick there. Saint Anne's or Saint Anna's Church is definitely a beautiful piece of art. It's a small church, but yet very intimate, and it's just right smack in the heart of the city. The church first came into existence way, way, way back in the year of 1320, and it was consecrated on the occasion of Saint Anne's Day. Which fell on twenty sixth of July, in fifteen eighteen, and every year on Saint Anne's Day, which is on twenty sixth of July, a relic of the saint, that's her right hand, will be exhibited. Confession time. I think one of the main reasons, if not the main reason itself, for us to choose Saint Anna's Church for our evening of classical music performance is its proximity to many F and B outlets in the city. It's so convenient. We just stepped out of the concert, and what do we find? Just one door away. This gelato shop. We already have a place in mind for dinner, which is just a short stroll from here. So this little stop off at the Ferrari Natural Gelato is kind of like an intermission between the concert and dinner. Anyway, this place looks as if that they close relatively early. I'm still quite frustrated with the dining hours here in Central Europe. I'm so used to the Spanish time. So since arriving in Vienna yesterday afternoon, I haven't had any Austrian schnitzel, nor any Austrian craft beers. Here we are, and this is the place which we have been talking about ever since we arrived in Vienna, and it's where we intended to end up for the night. And this place is called the People's Republic of 1516. Just in case you're wondering, what's the significance of the number 1516? Well, way back in the year of 1516, there was a law passed in Germany to maintain the purity of the production of beer. The law wasn't very complicated then. It simply stated that only water, barley, and hop can be used in the production of beer. 
This German beer purity law is also known as Reinheitsgebot. Okay, that's quite a mouthful to pronounce, especially if you're not a German speaker. So to make it more appealing, this craft beer gastropub has named itself simply as 1516. This place has its very own microbrewery and it's known as one of the best places in Vienna to enjoy your IPA. We didn't order a full pint because we just wanted to have little tasters because there are just too many to choose from. We didn't come here just for the craft beer. We are actually feeling a little bit peckish right now and we are so ready for our first taste of goulash and also schnitzel in Vienna. This looks damn good, right? You may ask, what's the difference between a German schnitzel and a true Viennese schnitzel? Well, a few years ago, I was in Cologne and I've tasted schnitzel there. So is it recommended that I should try schnitzel in Vienna also? I guess it's a little bit like asking, is the Hokkien Mee in Singapore the same as the Hokkien Mee in Kuala Lumpur? The Austrians are very proud about it and if you see it in the menu, described as a Viennese schnitzel, it will be strictly made out of veal cutlets. Hey, I hope Junior doesn't finish his plate of goulash because I'm looking so much forward to diving into this also. Ending our evening with schnitzel, goulash and good quality craft beer. Well, what more could a girl and a boy ask for? This is Gobble Guzzle signing off from the beautiful city of Vienna. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Join me again the next time for yet another Makan Makan session. Until then, be kind always and spread peace. Jumpa lagi. Bye-bye.